Hello, I am Dr. Varlakshmi, working as Assistant Professor in Vardhaman College of Engineering. Today, I would like to explain about the concept of estimation. So, before going to the concept of estimation, so we already discussed in the last videos as that population means the group of individuals we call it as a population and a small portion of the population we call it as a sample. So, now let us see the concept of estimate. So, estimate means an estimate is a statement made to find an unknown population parameter. So, parameter means the population observation we call it as a parameter. So, now we are going to define an estimate is a statement. So, statement means suppose the movie is running successfully that is what we call it as a statement. The movie is running successfully after 100 days. It means that the statement includes a number that is what we call it as a parameter. Now, we are going to define estimate means an estimate is a statement made to find an unknown population parameter. So, this is what we call it as an estimate. Now, let us see the next concept of an estimator. A saying in simply estimator means the estimating functions we call it as an estimators. So, the procedure or rule to determine an unknown population parameter that is what we call it as an estimator. This is the difference between estimate and estimator. Now, let us see the next concept we have the types of estimation. So, generally we are having two types of estimation that is what we call it as a point estimation and interval estimation. Now, let us see the first definition of a point estimation. So, point estimation means if an estimate of a population parameter it is given by a single value then it is called a point estimation. So, for example, if you are going to conclude about the age of a particular person. So, if you are concluding it exactly the age of a person is 30 or 35, it means that that is what we are going to define a single number. Our measurement it concludes about a single number that is what we call it as a point estimation. Now, let us see the example. The height of a student is measured as 162 centimeters. So, we are concluding about only one number. So, that is a measurement it gives a point estimation. Now, let us see the concept of an interval estimation. Interval estimation means if an estimate of a population parameter is given by it is defining about two values. It means that if you are going to define about the age of a particular person, if it lies between from 30 to 40 or the height of a particular person. Now, let us see the height is given as 163 plus or minus 3.5 centimeters. We are going to define it as we are adding plus 3.5 and we are going to subtracting minus 3.5. So, we will get a two values that is what 159.5 centimeters and 166.5 centimeters. This measurement we are going to conclude it as an interval estimation. Now, let us see that before going to solve the problems of an estimation, we are going to finding out a, a small theorem that is the result is a sample mean is an unbiased estimator of the population mean mu. So, in the uh, previous concept we defined about the population size, this is what we are going to define it as capital N and the sample size is denoted by small n and the population mean is denoted by mu and the sample mean is denoted by x bar. Now, let us see that our result is the sample mean is an unbiased estimator of the population mean mu. So, now let us see the proof. Whenever you are having x1 to xn or n random observations or n random samples, it is to be drawn from a given population with the mean mu and the variance sigma square, then we are going to define it as expectation of x bar. So, anything we are going to finding out the average of a particular class. We are going to finding out x bar is equals to summation x by n. So, now we are going to define it as a of 1 by n summation x i. So, i refers to we are taking here as from 1 to n samples. So, and we are going to define it as 1 by n into e of x 1 plus and so on plus x n. So, we are going to define it as 1 by n into we have to split each and every value. This is what we call it as e of x 1 plus e of x 2 plus and so on plus e of x n. So, we know that e of x is equals to mu. So, now we are going to substitute in the place of e of x 1 place as mu. So, in the same way we are getting the value of here the sum of these is n mu. So, you have to cancel the value of n. So, we will get the value of e x, x bar is equals to mu and we are going to conclude the sample mean is an unbiased estimator of the population 
May. Now, let us see the form of the maximum error estimate. So, whenever we have the given data of the sample size and we are having with the value of a population standard deviation, we can find out the maximum error estimate by using the formula of E max equals to Z alpha into sigma by root n. So, based on this formula, we are going to finding out the confidence interval also. It means that by using the same formula, we are going to finding out Z alpha by 2. How to find Z alpha by 2 now? Z alpha by 2 is equals to E max value into root n by sigma. So, by using this formula, we can find out the maximum error estimate as well as we can find out the confidence interval also. Now, let us see the next formula. We can find out the sample size. It is denoted by n. So, the value of n is equals to Z alpha by 2 into sigma by E whole square. So, now let us see the next one. We are going to finding out the confidence limits. So, this is what we are going to define at a based on the normal distribution. Whenever you are having P of minus Z alpha by 2 is less than Z is less than Z alpha by 2, we are going to define it as 1 minus alpha into 100 percent confidence. Now, let us see the problem. In a study of an automobile insurance, a random sample of 80 body repair costs had a mean of 472.36 and the standard deviation 62.35. If X bar is used as an appointment to estimate the true average repair cost, with what confidence we can assert that the maximum error does not exceed 10 rupees. So, we are going to finding out first, we are going to translate first into the given observations. So, the given sample size it is denoted by n is equals to 80. So, first we are converting our given problem into in terms of notation. So, the sample is having the mean. So, sample mean is denoted by x bar is equals to 472.36 and the standard deviation sigma is 62.35. So, these are the given values and the thing is we are going to finding out the maximum error and it does not exceed. It means that they are asking to finding out the value of here E max is equals to 10. We are going to finding out E max by using E max we are going to finding out alpha by 2 value. So, now we know the formula as E max E is equals to Z alpha by 2 into sigma by root n. So, based on this we are going to finding out the value of Z alpha by 2 is equals to now E into root n by sigma. So, now just to simply substitute the values in the given thing. So, that is what E is equals to 10 into the value of root n is equals to root 80 and the value of sigma is equals to 62.35. We are going to finding out this value the value of Z alpha by 2 is equals to 1.43. So, now let us see that the 1.43. So, in the normal distribution in the unit 2, we already know about the values of the table, how to finding out the value of 1.43. So, that is the value you are going to finding out for the 1.4 corresponding 3, we are going to write a normal distribution table value. So, that is what we are getting it as 0.4236. The value of Z alpha by 2 is 0 0.4236. It means that in the given problem with we can assert that the maximum error does not exceed and we are going to finding out the confidence level. So, this is what we are going to finding out an alpha by 2 is equals to 0 0.4236. From this we are going to finding out the value of alpha is equals to 0 0.8476. Now, we are going to finding out 1 minus alpha into 100 percent confidence limit. This is what we are going to find for this value. We are going to conclude it as the value is 84.76. So, now the thing is in the given problem the we by using the maximum error estimate, we are going to finding out the confidence level in this way. Now, let us see the next problem. It is designed to estimate the mean number of uh, hours of a continuous use until a certain computer will first require repairs. If it can be assumed that sigma is equals to 48 hours, how large a sample be needed so that one will be able to assert with 90 percent confidence that the sample mean is of f at most by 10 hours. As a last problem, we are finding out based upon the Emacs value. Now, the thing in the given problem, they are asking to finding out how large a sample. It means that we are going to finding out the value of n. So, now let us see the given values in the problem that is what we got Emax. Emax is off at 10 hours. So, Emax is off at 10 hours and they are asking to finding out the 90 percent confidence limits. We are going to finding out the value or they already mentioned here sigma is 48 hours and we are finding out the value of n. 
how much is the value of n so now the thing is we are going to finding out n is equals to z alpha by 2 into sigma by e whole square so now the thing is we are going to finding out the value of n is equals to z alpha by 2 1.96 and the value of sigma is equals to 48 by the value of e is equals to 10 hours so whole square then you will get the value of n is equals to 62.3 so when you will round off it that we will get the value of n is equals to 62 so in this way we are going to finding out the sample size of the given problem now let us see the next problem now let us see find the degree of confidence to assert that the average salary of the school teachers is between 272 rupees and 302 rupees if a random sample of hundreds 100 research teachers it is revealed with a mean salary of 287 rupees with a standard deviation of 48 rupees now in the given problem we have the value of x1 is equals to 272 so it means that the value of when x1 is equals to 272 we are going to finding out the value of first z1 z1 is equals to x bar minus mu by sigma by root n so now the thing is we have to substitute the value of x bar so that is what we have the value of 272 272 and a mean of with a mean salary of 287 with a standard deviation of 48 we are going to finding out and here the value of n is equals to a sample of 100 so it will be of 100 we are going to simplify this the first value of z1 is equals to minus 3.125 in the same way we are going to finding out the next value that is what when x is equals to when x when x1 is equals to 302 we are going to finding out the second value of z so that is what suppose we are assuming it as z1 less than z2 so it will be of x bar minus mu by sigma by root n so now the value of your x bar is 302 minus 287 by sigma by root n sigma is 48 by root 100 this is a value of 3.125 so now we are going to finding out the limit based on the normal distribution so we know that the normal distribution the curve extends from minus infinity to plus infinity and it peaks at an origin value so now it is a value of minus 3.12 it is a value of plus 3.12 it means that we are going to finding out the shaded region of this this is the what value we call it as a pi of z so now if the integration is of the value is from minus 1 to plus 1 we have the node minus 1 to plus 1 pi of z dz is equals to we are going to finding out 2 integral 0 to 1 pi of z dz so based on this we have one value is having the negative as that is minus 1 point minus 3.125 and positive value 3.125 now the thing is we are going to finding out the value of minus 3.125 this is what we are going to finding out the value of less less than plus 3.125 nothing but the value of corresponding with the value of 272 when substituting the value of 272 we got this value and substituting the value of 302 we got this value so now this is equals to what we are going to finding out 2 into probability of 3.125 this is what we are going to write it as based upon the normal distribution now we have to follow a normal distribution table value with the value of 3.1 corresponding to 5 so this is equals to 2 into as based upon the normal distribution table value so we got the table value here is 0 0.4991 so when multiplying this it with the value of 2 we got the value as 0 0.998 but in the given problem they are asking to finding out the confidence what percentage of confidence we are going to finding out so it will be of 1 minus alpha into 100 percent confidence we are going to conclude it as 99.82 percent confidence limits we are going to conclude this solution thank you